Okay, so in the previous video, we saw how to use the geometric formula here for the dot product to compute angles between vectors with the assistance of a calculator once you know what cosine of the angle is. Um, now, that led to us noticing that in one case, the dot product was zero and observing that, well, okay, um, if the dot product is zero, what does that tell us about the angle? Well, I mean, if as long as the two vectors themselves are not zero, right, as long as those magnitudes are not zero, then cosine of the angle has to be zero. And the only value of theta between zero and pi for which cos theta is equal to zero is at pi over two, which is a right angle. Right? So my vectors u and v, right, if u dot v is zero, well, one way that can happen is that the two vectors are, if you like, perpendicular to each other. Uh, but um, in mathematics, we use this word orthogonal rather than perpendicular. Perpendicular we still use uh, to talk about lines, two lines being perpendicular, but in the context of vectors, we use the word orthogonal. And one thing about this word orthogonal is it does include that possibility that one of the two vectors might be zero, because that is one way that the dot product could come out to be zero. Right? Okay, so then we come to this example. We're given a couple of vectors. We want to find vectors that are orthogonal to the given vector. Let's start with the first one. So let's say w is, now u is a two-dimensional vector, so w will also have to be two-dimensional or else the dot product will not make any sense. So w is, let's say, ab. And so that means that u dotted with w would be 3a plus 5b. And we want that to be zero. <coughs> so we start thinking about, well, how, you know, I'm allowed to choose anything I want for a and b. How do I do this in a way that guarantees I get zero? And if you think about it for a minute, there's, there's one kind of surefire way to do it which is to make sure that these two products we're adding together are, well, equal but opposite. Uh, so I could, for example, take a to be 5, and I could take b to be minus 3, right? Then I would get 15 minus 15, I would get 0 for the result, right? So I could take w to be uh, 5 and minus 3, and that is going to be orthogonal to the vector 3, 5. Um, now, these are vectors in the plane, so you, we can also, if you want, I mean, you can, you can think about a vector in a plane is also defining like a, a slope, right? The x and y components give you your like rise over run. You can do a slope, and we do see that kind of rule that we saw for lines with respect to slopes, right? That, 5 over 3, in this case, minus 3 over 5, that like negative reciprocal property for slopes of perpendicular lines, we, we see that showing up in the vectors as well. Okay. Now, uh, the first question does say to find two vectors that are orthogonal um, to this given vector. Uh, but if, if you think about it, there's actually not that much freedom. Once I've specified a vector, right, if I'm in the plane, well, there, there's kind of this one direction. It's perpendicular. I could rescale. So I could take my second vector to be any sort of scalar multiple of, of this vector, and that would give me a second one, right? Um, and that's what it would have to be. So I could take, for example, 10 and minus 6, or I could take minus 5 and plus 3. Those would be additional vectors that are orthogonal to the one that we were given, but they're, you know, only up to a scalar multiple are they different from the one we already found. Um, in fact, you might sort of notice from from this equation here, you could solve, let's say, for a, right? a would have to be minus 5 over 3 times b. So once you choose a value for b, you kind of are forced into the value for a. So there's not as much freedom as you might think. <coughs> okay. But if we go to the three-dimensional example, but let's, you know, let w in this case equal to a b, c, and 
our vector v is 1, 2, 3. Okay. And we think about what we get this time for the dot product, v dot w. We're going to get um, 1 times a, 2 times b, and 3 times c. And we want that to be equal to 0. Well, this time there are actually, you know, very many, there's infinitely many solutions to that equation, but, you know, there's even more freedom that we had here. I mean, yes, there were infinitely many solutions here, but they're really, you know, they're sort of controlled by the value of this one value, b, right? Uh, but if you think about what's going on in, in three dimensions, right, you have have your vector, let's say v is here, and you think about all the directions that could be orthogonal to that given vector, right, all the other vectors that could be orthogonal, and you realize that, oh, they, they actually fill an entire plane. And this is something that we'll be talking about once we get to the section on planes. Um, that vector v is, is what would be known as a normal vector, right? It has this nice property that it's actually orthogonal to everything in the plane. So if I draw any vector in the plane, right, uh, it's going to be orthogonal to that vector v. So lots of possibilities, which might leave you wondering, among all those possibilities, how do we actually narrow this? How do we pick? Um, how do we come up with an example that works? Well, one thing you can do is you can just choose values for, say, two of those three variables, and then use that equation to force a value for the third. Uh, so I'll pick, and I'm going to pick just to keep whole numbers here. Uh, we could try, let's say, a is equal to 3, and b is equal to 0. We plug those into our equation. We get uh, 3 plus, well, 2 times 0. Um, plus 3c, that has to be 0. Well, <coughs> c then has to be minus 1, and that gives me the vector w as 3, 0, negative 1. And we can check by doing a dot product that that is indeed orthogonal to the vector v that we started with, right? Um, we could also, we could try flipping those around. We could take a equals 0, b equals 3, and if we put those in, what do we get? We would get, uh, in this case, 0 plus 2 times 3 now, so 6 plus 3c equals 0. So this time, c would have to be negative 2. And that would give me, well, I guess maybe, we, you know, these are different. Let's call that w1, w2. And this time we would get 0, 3, negative 2. Again, we can check with the dot product. 1 times 0 is a 0, plus 6, minus 6. We get 0 for the dot product, so that checks out. It is orthogonal. And these two vectors here, they are, they are definitely not parallel. Remember that for vectors to be parallel, one has to be a scalar multiple of the other. And there's, there's no way that's going to happen here, right? There's no sort of common factor or multiple that I can use to multiply each of these numbers and end up with those. Um, in particular, the fact that we have the, the zero in the different spots is definitely going to rule that out for us. Okay? All right. So that gives us um, some orthogonal vectors. Um, with respect to ones that are given, which is something that often does come in handy.